Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into ClayShare Live. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips. We have two fabulous broadcasts planned for you tonight. First, we're going to have Jeff Rotman from GR Pottery Forms joining us, and he's going to teach you how to make this fabulous deep dish pie plate. Look at this. This is amazing. Um, we're also going to be giving away a stack of the GR Pottery Forms circles. So someone's going to get these. Well, not this set, this is mine. I'm keeping this because they got clay on them and I've been using them. So you can't have these, but we'll get you new ones. How's that? That's better, right? New ones is much better. Um, and then we are going to, in prime time, have a tutorial where I'm gonna teach you how to make a large wildflower plate. And we're gonna give away two, that's right, two mini rollers to two lucky winners. Each one gets one. And that's for my premium members at 615. So we're going to be doing that. Um, we're also going to have a special promo with Jeff this whole month long. GR Pottery Forms is sponsoring ClayShare. So we're going to have specials each week that we have a live broadcast. So this week we're going to have a special on the circle forms where you can save 10% and then GR, then ClayShare members get another 10%. So actually you guys watching the broadcast, you all get the extra 10. So we'll get that code to you guys in a bit and we'll share that with you all. A little bit of clay share news that we have out to share with you guys. We have the new Ginkgo rolling pin available on clay share market. So if you've been waiting for that to come back out, cause it's been a little over a year and a half since that was available, you guys can check that out. I actually have one right over here. Yes, I do. There it is. Um, we've also opened up the mini rolling pins to everybody. So if you've been trying to get the mini rolling pins, guess what? You can get them now. Don't have to wait at all. You can just go get them. And um, well, you gotta wait for shipping, but you don't have to wait for the order. So you know at least you got them. <laughs> all right, um, so Jeff's getting everything together. I'm just gonna check to make sure he's ready for us. Jeff, are you ready for us tonight? He had to do some last minute. Oh, you're ready? All right. So we're going to get everything together and send it on over to Jeff. Now, next week, Jeff's going to be back with us again, too. So you get him this Wednesday and next Wednesday. And next Wednesday, we have a pie party and a tutorial. A little bit of both. All right. Let's go see what Jeff's getting up to in, in his studio. Hey, Jeff. Hello. How's it going? Hello. How's everybody doing? Uh, Everybody's Saturday, doing gonna... good. We're glad you're here with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, my favorite thing is pie. So I'm glad to be uh, showing you how to promote <laughs> making pie so uh, so that you can uh, give the love to other people, too. That way, you know, pie is a, a good way to give love, I think. <laughs> so, yeah. I agree with you. All right. So, my favorite way to make a pie plate, and we get tons of questions about um, bowls, deeper forms, and uh, just different ways to make different shapes, right? So, what I really like and what I try to design the forms to be is to be multifunctional, multi use, so that you can get uh, so many different options out of them. So, what I'm gonna to do tonight is I'm gonna take a round stack and I'm gonna take the bottom two forms, which is a nine and a half and 11, and then I'm gonna use those to make a pie plate, just like Jessica was showing earlier here. And uh, yeah, and then I'm gonna do a couple different things uh, showing you that. So maybe I might make three different pie plates here tonight. And so, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we awesome. also have uh, sure. we have an octagon shaped pie dish, uh, which is two sizes, and that's kind of lovely. But um, you know, I'm a traditional kind of uh, maker, so I like the round one a little bit better. So I'm going to show you the round version. Um, I, I have access to a potter's wheel here, so I am going to use a wheel to assist me in making the pie plate. But you definitely can do this all by hand, and uh, you don't really need to use the wheel. There's lots of great tutorials out there on um, how to do that by hand without using a wheel. You could use this uh, a banding wheel, 
or uh, or even just have a prop that you can kind of drip, put the form down and drip play over top. So yeah, so I am going to, I just rolled out a couple slabs of clay. You know me, I always gotta have fresh clay. So it's the Minute of uh, before we come on live, the slabs are ready, and uh, I'm using the WAS system to, uh, which is wheel attachment, to have me use the wheel to assist me in making the using these forms. Okay, so I take my little yellow mud tools rib here, and uh, I had a little couple pieces of clay that were the slab where there was some holes in it. So I patched them with some clay from the outside. Looks like I need to do that a little bit more. And I want to kind of get the clay as smooth as possible before I turn the wheel in motion. So now once I get the, the wheel in motion, I can use my rib to uh, compress the clay. And I think it's very tempting to use moisture, to use a sponge or to use spritz or uh, to make the clay wet in this situation, especially if you're already used to throwing with a sponge. I would highly recommend avoiding that if possible. And the reason in this particular using slabs, um, and from my view anyway, you can make it work, I'm sure, but uh, for me, I found find that the clay releases from the forms a lot better. And I don't know if it's really true, but in my own theory, I feel like the um, the clay particles are going to align better because there's a little more resistance between the the kind of wet clay and my rib. Where if there was a water or a sponge, it's just going to kind of clean the surface and sponge the surface and add a layer of moisture, but it's not really going to, I don't know, in my opinion, it'll, it'll affect what's below even more by creating a little more resistance. So all I'm going to do is um, kind of smooth out the slab, compress the slab, so that it, uh, I try to have some throwing marks on there, but if I can eliminate them, that's better, because um, if I put it on there a little bit off center, it won't be as noticeable, but um, this one I have a little bit of a little bit of throwing marks on there, so uh, you'll be able to see those slightly. Move that off the side a second, and now I'm going to take. Jeff, while you're doing that, how thick is your slab that you're using? Tell me again. How thick is the slab that you're using? Oh, I love that question. It's a good question, especially in this case. Uh, I may, I typically like, and I didn't really switch to be honest, but um, if I were to make a bunch of, a batch of uh, these plates, I'd make them a little bit thicker um, because it uh, helps in the oven to have a kind of nice uh, barrier between the crust and the heat. And it's kind of slow cooks the crust if it's a little bit thicker. Uh, so I would go a little bit over a quarter of an inch. I like typically I like to be slightly under a quarter of an inch, but um, for these kind of these pie plates, a little bit thicker is, is a little bit nicer. So all right. Now I'm going to take my little um, walk to key, put it on here. And I'm only going to have one pin in because I'm using the number one forms, one drill hole pin forms. And I'm just going to set these on here. I know Jess has a cool trick of um, putting moisture in between the layer to keep them stuck. I um, I like I I like to avoid that if I can. Or, you know, I just like to take a little higher risk. <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. I'm not going to put anything in between. And I'll sh just show you how I deal with that a little bit from my perspective here. So I can grab the slab that I prepped and drape the clay over. Um, 
So now the tendency really is to kind of squish that clay really quickly um, as fast as possible. But you want to slow down. This is like, you know, take a little breather, pump the brakes, and kind of gently push the clay from outside in so we don't like overstretch the clay. We want to make it kind of even. And so what see, clay like, are you using? Uh, what clay am I using? Yeah, what clay are you using? I'm using a 182G from Standard. I really That's like that clay. clay. It's, uh, it's got rock in it, but you can't really tell. It's um, it's it's actually the sand, so kind of a little higher grain green, green uh, silica, basically a higher mesh silica, and so it's uh, it really holds up really well for hand building. You can use it for raku firing. Uh, I use it for wood firing. So I think what some people don't really like, especially with the commercial glazes of 182G, is that uh, it has, and what this is, what people don't like about it is what I like about it. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> is that it has a pretty big fire freeze range. And I know there's lots of conversation right now about vitrification. And uh, I, um, for me, I'm not as, that, as concerned as, for vitrification, obviously it's a concern. But for me, I'm making shallow pieces, not like bases, like uh, things that would be in really fancy places that would hold water. But, um, but anyway, there's the reason I like it is there's such a big range from firing it um, with low fire glazes, the O4, to firing it mid fire with some nice stoneware glazes. And from using it in a raku to using raccoon glazes and then also using wood kiln and uh you know and the wood kiln is really going to be vitrified <laughs> but it uh it creates a nice color it's a little bit not really i know a lot of times people like other clays because uh they're a little whiter a little closer to porcelain looking we 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 i'm trying to get ahead i'm talking and not paying attention here. <laughs> Back at you. Stop so, making if you're talking. Yes, yeah, stop, stop, stop. So uh, uh, I really like, I really had good success. They're, they're definitely, I use it in our studio when I had a community studio and some people um, get some crazy with some of the underglazing, other underglazes with, with this clay. But uh, for me, like standard stoneware glazes, it works great. But uh, yeah, sorry. I like to make long answers to short questions. <laughs> all right, so now I kind of gently went all the way around. Now what I want to do is make sure that the bottom is a, is uh, attached to the board below here. So I'm going to just gently kind of add some compression to make sure everything is held in place, especially that bottom form. And the reason this is is because I have that one pin under there and there's a possibility that it can move. But as long as there's all this clay on the outside here, I can, um, it'll hold itself in place. There's no real reason to have a second pin for this particular situation. So now what I can do, before I get too, too much compression here, I can take my finger and I can lift up on the clay and the check to see if those forms have shifted in there. And no matter what, I mean, there's probably some things you can do to kind of eliminate the, that seam line, but uh, for the most part, it's gonna be there. So I'm just going to kind of deal with it and it feels like it's in place. If it were in place, I would, uh, at this point, I could push it in place. The other thing I can do to help make sure that it's uh, in place is to kind of gently add pressure with my rib here. And as the wheel turns, I'm going to hold that rib in place. And in a sense, it'll kind of help center the clay um, for me as well.
I think the hardest part as a beginner is the, you know, the controlling your pressure. And, and uh, I think it's just something that you, you work on as you go and uh, just drink some, uh, just do what you need to be real relaxed and enjoy it. Um, we're not, this is not going to be a gift to Martha Stewart to make her Thanksgiving pie. Uh, so there's not a lot of pressure. <laughs> this, especially if you're like, for me, like I would make it for my mom and my mom, you know, she's going to love it no matter what. Right. So, uh, so, uh, that's what moms do. <laughs> but I, uh, but she has a few pie plates and she, she, uh, is a great pie maker. So I get to, uh, get the love, extra love from my mom for uh, making pie. She's probably watching, so I'd better uh, talk nicely about her. Well, oh, she's great. <laughs> but yeah, mom, how was your mom doing? Uh, mom, mom's doing okay. She had surgery. Um, we didn't get great news back from the pathologist from the surgery, so we're going to be going on ahead with more cancer treatment. It's spread a bit. So, yeah. But she's a fighter, and we're there to support her, and we're going to do everything we can to beat it. So, yeah, yeah. we're all trying to stay positive, and um, we're looking Definitely. forward to having yeah. Christmas together as a family. So, For sure, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, question. Um, Thank you. I will. I will. Yeah. So, I wanted to ask, when your mom bakes with your pie plates, it's a debate. I put my homemade bakeware in a cold oven, then I turn the oven on. Do you preheat your oven and then put it in or do you and bake like normal? I try to avoid any thermal shock. So I usually will make my casserole, lasagna, my pies. I put them in the oven, then I turn the oven on so that it slowly yeah. heats up and doesn't shock my handmade bakeware. Yeah. What do you think? Do you do that? Well, yeah. I mean, or do you me, it stick it in the good. oven? Huh? Or do you just stick it in with the oven at like 450 and away you go? Oh no. Well, see, usually for me is I'm I'm not that far planned. So for me to think about turning the oven on ahead of time and preheating the oven, I think with anything that I bake, I do not preheat the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Add a little extra time to my total time and put it in the oven. And I never have any problem. See, it works out great. That's meant to be. That's um, what I, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. Think there's definitely, I think there's definitely uh, you know, caution there. Like if you if you're a real planner, see, this is when you're gonna have problems. Like you pre-made the pie like a couple of weeks ago, and you put it in your freezer, and then you're gonna put it right in your oven, then that could be it, it could be a problem. So I I uh, I would agree that uh, that uh, you definitely don't want to, you want to try to eliminate the shock, eliminate the, the stress, no stress, right? So, um, That's yeah, right. totally. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, we have, uh, there, there's, uh, <laughs> you know, lots of things that can go wrong always. So don't, don't think about things that go wrong. Just uh, worry about things that go right. Look how good that five minutes taste. <laughs> so uh yeah All yeah right. i i've got um i've got a few people commenting on the preheating and i just want to add this to the discussion so in terms of baking uh this person learned that 99 percent of things people make preheating is not even necessary and can even waste energy when it sits hot waiting for the food to go in so preheating is probably not even needed yeah. So there you go. That's all I, I got. <laughs> I don't, I don't, and we all have our opinions, right? And, you know, we're probably going to change each other's opinions. So, uh, you do you. I'll do me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, no, you're good. That's totally good. I, um, just kind of thinking about that more, too, of like, uh, you know, I think, <sighs> yes. Clay is a is a good media for seeing failure, for being okay with it, for uh, going with the flow, not really getting too excited about it. So if you're new to Clay and you're you 
you are really kind of getting anxious about things, it might uh, change your world. <laughs> because you can't really be anxious. It uh, it will it will bring you to your knees if you uh, if you're really anxious about things, right? So uh, just gotta you know just keep at it, keep showing up, keep making pie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I I just used the uh, I kind of um, with a lot of things that I make. Even um, square, rectangle, hand-built uh, forms. I like to take my finger and go along that outside edge, like kind of right in, like this where the, like right at that edge part, you know, where the the form meets the surface below. And let's ride my finger along that edge, kind of creates this nice kind of edge there. Uh, but then also it leaves a finger mark that I can usually cut. So I'm always thinking about. These natural kind of marks that will that I can use to kind of measure and cut with. So that's where I cut this particular like I could make it a little bit wider. I want I think the next one I'm gonna make it a little wider. Um, but um, yeah so this kind of gives me a nice edge. I then just kind of just soften this edge so I am going to crimp, um, crimp the edge here in a second. So when I do that I can uh, it'll be a lot less stuff to clean. I have, um, you can see, like, I try to avoid sponges because I just start playing in the water. But, um, uh, but uh, it, uh, I, I try not to use a sponge on this groggy clay because it kind of brings that uh, grog right to the surface. So, so yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little uh, MKM roller here. And I'm just going to kind of by hand almost manually just kind of imprint the side of the plate here with my stamp, my roller stamp. And I just want to make sure that I'm going from bottom to top and covering all the any gaps that may occur. And go all the way around. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to clean it up so it looks like it's a band of uh, of texture. So you could use, you don't have to use, you don't really need to use a roller. You could use just a stamp, a stamper, Deb, 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 most of you guys know Deb Dela Cruz makes some wonderful stamps. It'd be a good time to add some, some Deb stamps on the side. And then once you kind of have that all the way around, I can now take my finger. I should show you the before and after. But now, basically, next plate. I can kind of smooth that out so it looks like it's a band of texture. I don't know if that goes, goes in there, right? Yeah, it looks really nice. Yeah, it looks great. So questions have come in asking, do you sell the MKM rollers? MKM rollers, what was the question? About do you those? sell them? Oh, I do not. I, you can get them at almost every supply yes. place, uh, except for gear body forms. Um, I I have a really hard time deciding which are the which are the which ones are there's so many options. When there's so many options are I I kind of go a little crazy. I have a hard time with that. <laughs> So I, uh, I understand that everybody there, you know, even regionally, they have some different kind of regional stamps, like, like, kind of, yeah, um, but there's, and there's also other kinds of companies that make stamps out there as well. So, yeah. Maybe someday, because I know a lot of, for a lot of you, it's, uh, you're looking for somebody to help you decide those choices as well. So I'm aware of that and uh, hopefully some down the road, maybe I'll help you with that. Like uh, carry kind of my favorite top five stamps or something like that, but um, <laughs> yeah. But I know it's, there's so many different options out there. I actually like, uh, I don't know if uh, 
how many Aldi fans are out there, but I'm a big Aldi fan. And I like Aldi because uh, there's less choices. And you kind of know which, uh, it's more of the European style of a market versus the American style, but uh, there's, you know, there's maybe one or two choices of everything that would be common things. And then you get a choice with uh, the branded one or the non-branded one. And uh, there we go. So Aldi, I'm Aldi guy. All right, so now I can lift this up out of here. Do, do, do. Ah. And then it's just off man. I can now um kind of see that. I can uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my two fingers and I'm going to push use the two fingers as a measurement. We don't know if you can see. You can see that we have to go on this side. We have to go to the overhead, I think. And uh, Jeff, hold on. We'll, I'll direct you. I think you're out, out of frame. But I think we're going to go. Yep, we're going to go overhead. So you need to come back to the center a tiny bit more. Right, yeah. Let's use my little uh, water jar There here. you go. Perfect. So that folks can see what exactly you're doing. Yeah, so it's fingers. crimping. Crimp, crimp, crimp. And you can, you, can, um, you can push down or you can push up. I'm pushing up in this case. And you just got to kind of hold your fingers in place. Um, you get kind of good at it. You can do it wide or you can do it narrow. I think it's very fun. You can do this on regular bowls and plates too. So you don't have to just be on pie plates. Any crimpers out there? I like to crimp. Yeah, it's addictive. It is. Have a, um, a crimping uh, Facebook group, maybe, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whoa. There we go. Look at that. Fabulous. Love. The other fun thing about crimping the edge is that you, if you do your plate works or anything, it uh, hides it, it for you. Yeah. Hide it, hide it, hide it. Now, how long will you leave that on the form? Uh, it's about six hours around here. Yeah. And really, what I want to do is leave it so that I can take my finger and kind of lift up, lift up on the on the piece, and the the form will just kind of fall out. So. Uh, that's how you know. So if you pick it up with one finger and it kind of moves or flexes, the play moves or flexes, it's not long enough. So I like it to be like a, like a medium leather hard, like kind of like a, like a good belt, like a uh, consistency of a, of a good belt. So, uh, yeah. All right. Let's make it, I'm going to make a bigger one here now in a minute. Any other questions that I can answer? So are the new WA2 forms available from the UK suppliers yet? Uh, no, they, you know, it's, it's unbelievable how long it takes to get them there. Um, there is, um, it's usually about 90 days right now to ship something uh, via, via freight um, large quantity. So, I think I think Pot Place may be getting some in uh, the UK, but uh, yeah, and I'll actually you know what um, another one is uh, how why how do I forget um, Agnes in uh, uh, the Netherlands Cotton Basker, the Cotton Basker she she has a whole bunch she's gonna have a really good stock of them hopefully by Christmas so. Uh, they are on their way, but uh, hopefully the, the shipment will arrive. If not, 
um, right after Christmas. So yeah, check with her or check with the pot plays. Um, the other ones we're, uh, we're waiting on here till probably the beginning of the year or so uh, when they kind of restock. So so soon the the next the new year is only a few weeks away. It is the fourteenth. I mean, it's only two weeks. Drink some eggnog yeah. and it'll be here. <laughs> it's gonna be here okay. sooner than you know it. Some stolen. You, know, <laughs> you can get these things from Aldi. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, other folks are saying how much they like Aldi. They have a great gluten free section at Aldi. So. They do a nice job. You know, I think they kind of narrow down, you know, what the masses really like or what they're willing to buy. And uh, they usually have it. My son, uh, our, our son, uh, he, he's dying. Uh, he, he likes their pancakes. They have these little, little pancakes. He has two little pancakes every morning, usually. Um, and they're in the frozen section at Aldi. And uh, they're like two bucks for like 24 of them. So it's like, Good work. <laughs> so a question about if you sell pie pl plates, how much would you sell it for? Like if you're selling your pie plates at a market your, or a shop, what are you going to sell your pie plates for? What are you going to sell for? That yeah. is a good question. I think, and that's why, I think this is why I like making pie plates is because you can start at minimum like $36 and you can go up to like maybe 65 depending on how much decorate them. People are willing to pay more for something like that where it's like a specialty type, type thing. And it's really just a bowl, right? But it's uh has a special purpose. And so for that purpose, it takes a, it's uh they're willing to pay a little more price for it. So that's why I think it's a great uh as a as a functional maker, it's a great uh thing to have in your uh, existence. <laughs> You can make them quite quickly. You don't even need a foot on the bottom for sure. And uh, yeah, so, all right. I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to kick it up a little bit to the bigger size. So I would take, if I had that round stack, um, I, I would take the 11 inch from the bottom and then I would add the 12 and a half inch round so that I can make, just a little bit wider. So 12 and a half is the, um, the, the bottom dimension. On the last one was 11. So the 11 inch one is gonna basically translate after shrinkage to about 10. This one's gonna be about 10, about 11 maybe, right? Let That's gonna be a little... huge pie. That's gonna be huge. Yeah. <laughs> Giant pie. Yeah. So we're going but for the great it. thing about a pie dish is you can bake in it, you know, casseroles and stuff. It doesn't, or quiche. It doesn't have to just be pie. You can, you know, make all kinds of, make a mac and cheese in it. There you go. Exactly. Um, my wife likes to make, is really good at making the, um, like a chicken pot pie, right? Like a savory Ooh, pie. Yeah. And those are some great recipes out there for those. Like, uh, and you can buy, pre-buy the, the tennis one I think would be good uh, with the, those pre-made crusts that you can buy in the store at Aldi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored Aldi. by Aldi? Sponsored by Aldi, yes. Um, yeah. All right. So I, I just put the 12 and a half on the bottom here. And uh, let's put the clay right on top. I pre-compressed the slab. So 12 and a half, we're going to use almost all the 15 inch slab of, or the slab of clay. So you can see I used, I had it on this whole uh, wall board and I used it was 15 inches. So with those two stacks, it's almost going to use the whole amount of clay. So I really, what I really, really like, you know, is um, not just because they sell them, but, um, but because uh, it really helps to have consistent sizes. So you don't have to use a measuring tape to measure things or a ruler. You can use baby your common tools to like know how much, how big a slab you're gonna need. Sorry, 
So we're gonna make this move down fast. Another fun thing, um, I think the deeper the forms are, the the more options I would say you have to um, decorate the outside. So it's a good time to decorate the outside. We could add some color, um, do all kinds of things. We could carve in there, these are graffito or whatever. Now I'm checking for those edges. This one looks like it shifted a little bit, so I'm going to push it in a little. That's better. I think I'm going to make a third one here, but third one, I'm going to add some underglaze transfer, uh, like little blueberry blossoms. Jeez. You better hurry up, Jeff. You're going to make another one? You're going to make three tonight? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the beauty of having all these forms, right? It's like uh, systemized. Once you get those slabs made, you're in business. So I'm just going to compress the sides of the ribs. Making sure that I'm not going to stress the clay too bad right here on this ridge, right? It's really easy to kind of thin that out. So even kind of pulling some clay up to the to that spot. See, I'm going to use um Yeah, trying to find another stamp damper, but uh, uh, but let's let's not. You could free form it with a tool. You could just get a the back end of a, a brush or something, and you could just do a little wiggly thing going on it. You oh know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah get, like get a little crazy. Yeah, like the kind of the. Uh, I kind of started why I really wanted to make this uh, wash system was when I was in middle school, I would always sit on a potter a kick wheel and uh, use markers to like make color uh, such and such, right? So there we go. All right, maybe the learning part. Um, the really the, the temptation is to now try to clean these like uh, these sprays and these um, burrs. Uh, if you wait until it's leather hard or even bone dry in this case, they just scrape right off with a with a nice trim tool. If I try to clean them now, they're probably going to smear, and it's just going to cause a big mess. Don't worry. Those are going to be so nice with glaze, the way glaze will catch in those. Has a nice movement to it, right? Yeah. Kind of modern kind of feel to it. Let's see now I lied. So here we go. I always contradict myself. This is kind of what happens. I'm going to use a little sponge <laughs> clean this edge. I don't know why I was just feeling like it wasn't, uh, maybe this piece of clay is just a little wetter. So it was a little harder to deal with. So I'm just going to uh, clean this edge with sponge, just very gently, lightly. And uh, just going to remove this from the form and uh, I'm not going to trip this one, I'm just going to leave this one straight. There's always a trick when making stuff is to not mess up the edges, right? So we almost have to like. Like a drone, you have to like drop it down onto the this place of uh, origin there, <laughs> where it sits for a bit. All right, you give me that uh, mic. Shelby's here to help me tonight, so yeah. I'm grateful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
How's everybody out there doing? They're they're, they're doing well. They they want to know why you have wood glue on your table. Ooh. They're observant. Oh, I have in about uh, three minutes. <laughs> kind of like Hollywood. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna bait you to stay and watch until uh, watch to the end. Here, it's gonna be the final finale. The <laughs> I think it's a good. Uh, it will be good. It'll be worth the wait. I promise. So uh, you can go get some popcorn or some wine or some uh, tea. Hey, nah. Is this the intermission? Uh, the bourbon. All right. Breakfast left. A little bit of a kind of hole here. I want to fill that in. I always just take clay from the outside. Fill that in. Don't strangle your rib. The ribs are... You just have to hold on to it so it doesn't fly out of your hands. And that's that's all you gotta do. It'll do all work for you, judge where you to hold it. There we go. All right. So I used part of this other other um part of the unreleased transfer for another piece of white I have cut out. There's no real particular reason, but I'm just going to put this on here to have kind of go down through the center of the plate. And uh, I'm just going to use my uh, roller here, pony roller. That is a very sweet little transfer. I think sandbox. It's a sandbox. Yeah, it's perfect for pie. That blueberry pie. My mom would always make me a, a blueberry pie for my birthday. My birthday is in May. Um, so it probably started out when I was really young that uh, we had some blueberries in the freezer that needed to be used up because it was almost going to be blueberry time, right? So it would be a good chance to uh, make a blueberry pie. But uh, then she had to make one for me. Then she had to save me pack of blueberries so they didn't get all used so you could make me a blueberry pie for my birthday so that's still probably my, my favorite uh it's like a fresh blueberry pie not a um baked baked one but yeah <laughs> next week i'll have <laughs> a, a recipe of, or a re yeah, recipe of her crust yeah Ooh. well next week's pie of palooza right yes yes we got the, uh, the pie of palooza where we're gonna have all kinds of pie next week. Okay. Yeah. What you we're, gonna a, we're gonna have a finished pie plate with pie in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proof of the pie. <laughs> <laughs> Proof that they work. <laughs> Proof that they work. But uh, the main, uh, her main ingredient is uh, butter flavored Crisco. So, so those make a serious pie, right? Serious, then West style. All right, so I like to, um, I like to leave the transfer right on there, especially since it's already kind of cut. Um, it's not all the way around, so it's not going to crinkle or bend. And so I'm just going to just kind of leave it as part of the slab. Leave it right on there. I think part of the reason is is the um, I can get the most transfer out of that uh, out of the transfer, and also uh, it keeps that unrelated from transferring down to the forms because the clay is pretty wet still. So. It kind of can speed up the process, but then also, um, uh, yeah, kind of create that decoration. So interesting, like, see, I had three pieces that didn't have any problems with the first two, but now the third one is sat here maybe 10 minutes longer, right? 
and uh, it's kind of cracking a little bit. You can see that little crack, the crack right here. And and I don't, you know, the tendency is to put the moisture on there, but I want to just make sure that I'm just going to kind of compress that clay together there and maybe even add some extra clay on there just to give it a little more strength. There we go. <laughs> so again, I'm going to make sure this clay attached to the board. I'm going to lift up on the edges to make sure nothing's moved. I'm in good shape. Now I can use my King Danny rib on the side first to uh, make sure that it's uh, centered and that I'm not uh, from thinning out that top ridge. I'm kind of pushing the clay up there. And now I can kind of squeeze out that bottom. I highly encourage you to like, you know, uh, decorate uh, with your style um, the outside here, right? Like, uh, I think I'm going to, you know, just kind of like kind of make these kind of like marks that look like kind of uh, branches. Kind of like that uh, underglaze transfer was the kind of blueberry blossoms. So let's just add some kind of some strokes of wiggliness. <laughs> and the less, you know, the more you're free with it, uh, the kind of better it kind of reacts. So I'm going to take a, the end of a pencil. And I'm just going to make kind of some dots that look like blueberries. And it really, it's really, um, I think the more you try to make it look real, the less real it looks, right? So you just kind of give a general feel like you're sketching the, the idea. It's going to turn out way nicer. So just go for it. You can do it. And the more you just put your, let it happen. Like a lot of times you see like kids art and how wonderful it is because they didn't try to like manipulate the drawing and be, be it something that it's not. They just went for it, right? And uh, here we go. Whoa. So let's cut this and then I'm going to talk about the wood glue. All right, and we have a giveaway. Giveaway. Oh, yeah. Yes. promo. That's right. You're doing a special on the circle forms. So if folks want to get them. You can go to grpotteryforms.com yes. and use the code. What are we using we for the code tonight? We actually just lowered the price for you just for a couple of days. We lowered it by 10%. And then if you add the, the clay share code, you just type in clay share, you will get an additional 10%. So you're going to get 20% off if you order in the next couple of days here. Um, um, there's only two sizes that you'll get that on. And it's 12 and, a half, 12 and a half inch round that I used. And then also the round stack. So it's a good time to buy those. Um, yeah. All Back right. up and save. All right, was there other uh, good, goodness that we could talk about? Promos. The wood glue. Yeah. Wood glue. Oh, yeah, wood glue. <laughs> we got plenty of time, though. Uh, we got 11 minutes. Yeah. All right, right? All right. So. These are like, what are the other things where you kind of uh, roll the barn around? Oh, wait, no, they're not. All right, so this is a little trick that I like to do with my pie plates. Um, and I have a wood glue because I couldn't find this, this standard Elmer's glue. 
but it really doesn't really matter because it's just um, going to glue um, the, the little wad of clay on there. So if any of you ever have a chance to do wood firing or uh, soda firing, a lot of times they have to put these wads at the bottom of your pots to lift them up off the shelf. So they don't stick to the shelf, even if it has a foot. And so I'm like, oh, I could use that wad theory to make pie plates. And so what I do is um, I paint on, I already did, I take some wax. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but um, see if I can move it around so you can see the shininess. I make five little spots of wax with a paintbrush, little round circles. And then I dip it in the glaze or paint the glaze on however you want to do it. But I dip it in with my tongs and it leaves these marks, these little round spots where the wax was, right? So pretend this one, oh, we'll do this one first. Pretend this one has the okay, glaze in already. So then I take my wood glue and then I just add a drop of, of the glue on top of each of those little wax marks. And so obviously the glue was going to burn out in the kiln. And so I'm really just doing this to hold these little pegs in place until I can load it in the kiln. So when I load it in the kiln, they don't go falling or flying everywhere. So this is this is really a loading technique to load this pie plate into the is why I'm gluing them on here. I want them to be in strategic places, right? Because I I think with this pie plate, I want there to be glaze on the bottom. It just kind of helps to kind of seal the whole the clay and stuff. So these ones I did earlier, and it doesn't take long to put that uh, for the glue to dry. I did this before we started. But you can see, so now I can take this piece and I can set it in the kiln without really worrying about if those pegs are lined up or not. And then once the kiln is fired, they're just loose and you can uh, reuse those pegs again and again if you want, or you can make new ones, whatever you want to do. But um, that's how I basically glaze the bottom of a, of a pie plate by using those the wax and then, the, and then gluing the plate wet. So, the process is wax, let the wax dry, dip it in glaze, and then add glue with the little wads, and then let that dry, and then you can put it in the kiln. So now you don't put one in the center. You don't put one in the middle. You don't worry about sagging. You haven't had any slumping. Great question on these um, on these ten inch ones. I don't. I usually don't have to deal with worry. Maybe this twelve and a half inch one, ten and a half. We will be about eleven when it's fired. Um, I might, um, but uh, yeah, that definitely can happen if it's big enough. But um, uh, the other thing is that it will kind of, um, yeah. Yeah, because I think, as you know, if you make stuff with these little pegs, the it doesn't have the same structure all going all the way around. So you have to be a little bit cautious. So I wouldn't just put three pegs either. I would put them like every couple inches around. Uh, so that you um, get that good support on there as well. So, yeah, a lot to do. Lots of stuff. Folks yes, want to know, yes, what yes. did you make your little clay wads, your little clay pegs out of? Did you just use the same clay you made? Did you choose clay? Yeah, I don't know if you can see these two um, pegs, but one has not been fired yet. I mean, uh, glaze fired, and the other one has. So I've used this one already in a glaze firing, and I use them not. But I just take... Take the, take the chunk of clay, and if you make a strip, you can use a, you use a foot maker and cut equal little parts, and then when you round, roll them, they're going to be the same size. So, because you kind of want them to be the same size too, otherwise you might get some a little bit of a sag in your plate as well if they're different sizes. So, yeah, it's kind of a fun trick, and if you ever go to a wood fire, you'll be... Uh, Ahead of the game because you have to do make all these wads for um, wood firing pots. So, so the glaze. Kind yeah, of it's very on. much like wads from wood firing. So a few yeah. folks have said they tried to order and the clay share code is not working. Does capitalization matter? 
Do you have it set up all lower? Uh, no. Well, it's just for those two items, too. It's not. Yeah, it's, uh, you won't get yeah that's right. It's just for the circle stack and the 12 and a half inch oh, circle. Wait. So. Well, sorry. I'm sorry, I misspoke. You'll get 10% on, you should get 10% on everything. Um, if not, this email us and we will, we can handle, we can um, help you out individually. If it's not working for you, for sure. Um, but yeah, always be. email Jeff. If you're having any troubles trying to order stuff, if you have a code you're trying to use and it's not working, just let them know and they'll work it out for you. Don't worry about that. So, um, so if there's trouble tonight, we'll get it all straightened out. No worries. We'll take care of it. Another handy little thing there that says contact us. And just hit that button. It'll, you can type an email right to that. It comes right to us. So, uh, yeah. So that's all I really have for um, making the pie plates here tonight. I think, does anybody else have any other, any other questions that may have come up um, that I didn't answer yet? Folks, folks are pretty excited to try using the uh, wood firing. Uh, with, the, with the wads like you use for wood firing, those who know about it. And uh, yeah, so you reuse them, you bisque fire them and you just then will reuse them once they've been glazed. Uh, well, glaze fired. Yeah. Keep using them over and over. And if you're, if you're impatient, you can even just, um, uh, you could just put regular, because they're so small, you could put them right with your, uh, you, I can make them now and use them on my disc pieces too. So that's what a lot of times happens with wood firing. You don't, they don't really pre, pre fire the wads. So, but if you, if you do, it's kind of, it can kind of help a little bit. They, they roll less because as the clay shrinks, they kind of roll, right? So, yeah. So, Awesome. All right. Yeah. And I just want to let folks know people are ordering, they're using the code ClayShare capital C. The rest lowercase. So should, I think it'll yep. let you all, all uppercase, but I think any of it'll work. Yeah. So next week, Jeff's gonna be back with us. Thank you so much, Jeff, for this awesome tutorial tonight. Uh, I can't wait till next week because Jeff's going to be back with us. Um, Not only are we going to be eating pie, we're going to be making holiday dishes together and just hanging out and chatting and um, having a good time. I'm, I'm mostly in it for eating the pie, though. That's, that's really why we're here. <laughs> and I will have this pie plate glazed. This is one Jeff made at Clayscapes Pottery uh, last month when we were all out there for Raku Day in Clayscapes Open House. So this is the one you saw him uh, do that had the MKM roller. There you go. You can all see it. And then the bottom is signed by Jeff. And it's just a flat bottom. You don't need feet on bakeware. I actually don't like to put feet on bakeware myself. Kind of seems like Jeff feels the same. So uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that. And if you check out my bakeware classes, I do address that. But we're going to give away one of these right here. I'm super excited. Ta-da! So it's the circle stack. Um, and Jeff used the bottom one, which is the 11, and then the nine, let me just get this, the nine and a half and the 11 to make the pie plate. And that's what this one was made with right here. But it has three other sizes in it. They are the eight inch, the six and a half, and the five. So they're there on the website. You can get them, but somebody's gonna win them right now. We're gonna, we're gonna do this. All right. So the way you enter our giveaways, it's really simple. One, you become a premium member of ClayShare, which is really easy. You just sign up, download the ClayShare app, and then you can watch us all the time, anywhere you want. And with your premium membership, you get access to hundreds of full-length pottery classes and our exclusive live broadcasts and our Good Morning ClayShare and discounts on so many products, exclusive access to our rolling pins and discounts on those as well. So lots of cool stuff for ClayShare members, or if you're not a member, you don't have to be to win. You can just go to ClayShare.com and sign up for our emails, and that's all you gotta do. And then you get entered in the drawing. Easy peasy. Okay, the winner of the circle stack from GR Pottery Forms is Vanessa Gilks, or Gilkies. If I mis mispronounce your name, Vanessa, I'm terribly sorry. But it doesn't matter, because you win no matter how I pronounce it. Congratulations. <laughs> um, little bit of news that I want to share with folks. I did mention earlier that we are going to have the ClayShare Veteran and Veteran Caregiver Scholarship recipients. 
broadcast. We're going to announce who won those. That is going to be this coming Friday, December 16th at 5 p.m. Eastern. We're going to go live and do a special broadcast where we announce those winners. Um, the new Ginkgo pin, as I was just showing, is out, and we did make it accessible for everybody. The uh, Saratoga Clay Art Center over in Saratoga, it's actually in Schuylerville, New York, has an exhibition coming up next year that I am the juror for, and the exhibition is called Fired On, and they are open for entry. So if you want to enter your work in a national juried exhibition, this is a great chance to get your work out there and to start showing your work if you want to do that. So go to saratogaclayarts.org. The deadline is Ju January 11th, 23. Seeing 2023 throws me off, but that's what it is. It's all about decals, if you use transfers and those kind of things in your work like I do in mine. So check that out and maybe you want to enter. Okay, next in prime time, we're going to be doing the wildflower plate right here and uh, chatting a bit about what's coming up in Clayshire land. Thank you, Jeff, again for being a sponsor this month. If you haven't checked out JR Pottery Forms yet, go do that. It's grpotteryforms.com. Thank you, everybody, for being here, and I'll see my premium members.